In this screencast on mass transfer, we will talk about equimolar counter diffusion, Stefan diffusion, two field theory, and mass transfer coefficients. We will start by talking about what happens when we have both convective and diffusive transport. Then we turn our attention to two special cases, equimolar counter diffusion and diffusion through stagnant component, where the latter is also known as Stefan diffusion. And then at last, we will talk about mass transfer coefficients and two field theory. To reiterate what we have talked about before, if we have convective transport in a pipe and we know the flux rate, we can calculate the mass transfer as the concentration times the average velocity. And if we have diffusive transport, we can calculate the diffusive transport using Fick's law, the diffusivity times the concentration gradient. But what about the situation when we have both convective transport and we have diffusive transport? Well, we will assume that we have binary systems and if we have convective and diffusive transport with a blue liquid flowing through this pipe and a pulse of red liquid, it will look something like this. The pulse going through here from the left to the right. So this looks a bit messy to describe, but a way to describe this is to let the camera move along with the average velocity of the molecules. And then it will instead look like this. So on average now it looks like the molecules are standing still and the red mo molecules are slowly dispersing into the blue molecules. So what we're doing actually is a bit like riding a train. We let the coordinate system follow the average velocity. So we have a moving coordinate system and then the only movement is relative to that movement. So we only have diffusion left. But what if we want to stand next to the, this pipe and look at the flow as it passes? If we have a fixed coordinate system. Well, then we need to add this convection term here. So this term here is the transport due to the average velocity of all the molecules. Whereas this term here is the transport relative to that average velocity. There is one more thing and that's we have already said that the mass transport equals the concentrations times the velocity. So if we have a two component system, the concentration is the concentration of A plus the concentration of B and the mass transport here is mass transport of A plus mass transport of B. So the velocity, the average velocity can be written as the mass transport of A plus the mass transport of B divided by the total concentration. And thus we can rewrite the equation by using this term here instead. So this is our new convective term. Time to look at two special cases, equimolar counter diffusion and diffusion through stagnant component. We have two examples here. The one to the left is a tube with bromine gas that diffuses out into the surrounding air and to the left liquid water that evaporates and diffuses out to the surrounding air. As the bromine gas diffuses out, it is replaced by an equal amount of air simply because of the ideal gas law. Each molecule occupies the same space on average. So the mass transport of bromine, A here, must equal the mass transport of air, but in minus in front. So that's why we call it equimolar counter diffusion. In the water case, however, liquid water takes much less space than gas. So the amount of air needed to replace the water is negligible. We can simply say that the mass transport of air into the tube is essentially zero. Okay, so our special case, we take this equation here and then we realize that Na equals minus Nb. So this whole term, the convective term, simply vanishes and we're left with the diffusive part. So there is no convective transport and we can integrate and get that uh, mass transport of A in molar terms equals the diffusivity times the concentration difference divided by a distance difference. When we do this, we assume steady state. So the concentration gradient doesn't change in time. But what does this gradient look like? Is it a linear line like this one here? Is it a bend curve in this direction or is it a bend curve in the other direction? Take a minute and look at this equation down here and try to figure out which of the three illustrations is the right one.
Okay. I hope you have figured out that the equation down here is a linear equation. So we said that we had steady state, so Na is constant in the tube. So the concentration at one point in the tube is a linear equation of the distance. So these two illustrations are wrong. There is a linear concentration gradient and there is no convection. Let's do a calculation with uh, equimolar counter diffusion. We have two tanks, one with pure ammonia gas and one with half ammonium and half air. And the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. We have a diffusivity given, total pressure given, and the tube length, that is the distance between those two tanks, as 0.1 meter. So this is equimolar diffusion, which is simple enough. So we just integrate that and we get here a difference in pressure we because we can translate the concentration to pressure with the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT, so we can shuffle that around and then get P divided by RT equals the concentration. And we put in our numbers, 2.6, 10 to the power minus 5 for the diffusivity, the gas constant, the temperature, the total pressure, times the fraction, 0 0.5 in one and, and one in the other tank and the distance is 0 0.1. And we can calculate the molar transport as 5.3 times 10 to the power minus 3 mole per square meter and second. In the special case diffusion through stagnant component, we start with the same equation, but we realize that NB equals zero, and we get NA equals minus DAB DCA DZ plus YANA. Now there is a bit of a problem here, and that's hidden here, uh, because if you have one liter of, for example, water and mix that with one liter of ethanol, that doesn't become two liters of mixture. If you have gases, that's no worries, it becomes two liters. But if you have liquid, it doesn't. So the general case is difficult, but as long as we have ideal gases, this is fine. So we can use the ideal gas law, which means that the concentration equals the pressure divided by RT. And we have the Dalton's law, which says that the molar fraction in the gas phase equals the partial pressure divided by the total pressure. So this equation here, we can shuffle around and get this. And then we have a separable differential equation that we can integrate. And if we assume that the pressure and temperature is constant, then this means that we get this equation here. Now, when you integrate one divided by one minus y a, you have to remember the inner derivative. So a minus one comes out and takes away the minus there. So what about the concentration gradient? Will that be a linear line or will it be curve bent in this direction or one bent in that direction? Take a minute and look at this equation here and try to figure out which is the correct illustration. Okay, I hope you figured out easily that this is not a linear equation in Y, so it can't be a linear concentration of gradient. Then the question is, of course, is it number two or is it number three? Well, the convection term will go from the high concentration to the low concentration, and it will be number three here. So the convection goes in this direction, and it carries every package here of air from the high concentration to the lower, thus pushing the concentration gradient in this direction. If you think that that's difficult to think about, and if you would prefer dealing with it mathematically, then you can simply look at this equation down here. And for the same Na, a constant Na, use different values for, for example, Ya2 here and the distance and then simply calculate points here. Or you could simply calculate the midpoint and see is that larger or smaller than this here if it would be in a straight line instead. Okay, so it's a nonlinear concentration gradient and it bends in the direction of convection. So, so far we've dealt with situations where we have a well-defined film thickness, the same all over. But how do we deal with complex situations? For example, a catalyst in a car. Uh, 
Well, there are two main options. Either we simplify and use a mass transfer coefficient, which is the only option if film thickness is not well defined, or you make a detailed 3D model. Then, of course, you need to have much information about what the geometry is. I mean, if for this one example, the distance changes here all the time, so you have to be very careful that you get the correct description in three dimensions. When we use mass transfer coefficients, the mass transfer coefficient k will depend on things like the medium and flow conditions. Is the flow forced or is it not? That will change the mass transfer coefficient. Also things like temperature and pressure might change the mass transfer coefficient. And we need some way to determine the mass transfer coefficient. And you either do that through an experiment or you do that through estimations using a theoretical model. But that on the other hand demands that the film thickness delta is well defined. And you can of course combine these two so you determine the mass transfer coefficient for, for example, a few different temperatures and then you use the theoretical model to interpolate between those temperatures. There are a number of different theoretical models. There is the two film theory, which states that the only thing that happens in the film is diffusion. The penetration theory and boundary layer theory both deals with diffusion and convection, but the equations look quite differently. And you can compare this with equations in the compendium. Later in the course, we will also talk about Reynolds analogy and Chilton Colburn's analogy. They're also a kind of theoretical model, but they don't relate the mass transfer coefficient to diffusivity. Instead, they relate the mass transfer coefficient to the heat transfer coefficient and the momentum transfer coefficient. But now we will deal with two film theory. In the two film theory, we simplify and say that in this phase here, everything is constant up to the film. And then everything changes in the film only. And then we have the phase boundary and a jump in the concentration. And then something happens in this film here. The concentration decreases. And then in this phase over here, it's constant again. So the dotted line here is the theory. In reality, you get usually a, a gradual change as you approach. So usually the film thickness is not that well defined. When do you use the two film theory? Well, for example, in distillation, we have equimolar counter diffusion. If you have ethanol and water and no heat loss, we have equimolar counter diffusion in that case because ethanol and water has essentially the same heat of evaporation and there is essentially no mixing enthalpy, which means that one mole of gas condensing exactly evaporates one mole of liquid. And thus you get linear concentration gradients. Linear concentration gradients, wait a minute, let's compare the equimolar counter diffusion equation with the mass transfer coefficient equation. Here you have the difference in concentration and here the diffusivity divided by the film thickness and there the mass transfer coefficient. And note that both equations have the same form, which means that essentially you assume a linear concentration gradient when you use a mass transfer coefficient. And a second note here is that the minus here is often dropped and that's simply redefining the positive direction. In many cases we don't bother so much about whether it's a positive or negative because we all know that the mass transfer goes from high concentration to low concentration. In the other special case, Stefan diffusion or diffusion through stagnant component, we didn't have linear concentration gradients. But if concentrations are small, then Stefan's equation actually simplifies to the same equation as we used for equimolar counter diffusion. And that's because the limit for ln 1 minus x is minus x when x approaches 0. Now you can compare this with the mass transfer equation and realize that 
In this case, the mass transfer coefficient must then simply equal the diffusivity divided by the film thickness. Now there is a handy dimensionless number here, and that's the Sherwood number, which is simply the mass transfer coefficient times the characteristic length divided by the diffusivity. And the characteristic length is the film thickness. So for small concentrations and stiff hand diffusion, we simply get Sherwood number equals 1. Let's do an example. Estimate the thickness of an imagined boundary layer for a case where water evaporates to air at 25 degrees Celsius if the mass transfer coefficient has been determined to 0 0.05 meters per second. And you have the equation up here for the diffusivity divided by delta to calculate the mole transport and here with the mass transfer coefficient and then Sherwood number is of course k times delta divided by the diffusivity. So the solution is as follows. The diffusivity of water in air is approximately 2.6 10 to the power of minus 5 square meter per second and if we assume that we can use the two film theory so that means that Sherwood's number equals 1. Uh, well, is that a good assumption? Well, one way to figure that out is to look at the vapor pressure at that temperature and see is that a high concentration or is it low concentration? That's one indication if this is a good assumption, but we don't know mu very much more about this example. So there might be other circumstances than high concentrations that make the two film theory a bad model for this case. But anyway, if we assume Sherwood number equals 1, we simply get that the film thickness equals Sherwood's number times the diffusivity divided by the mass transfer coefficient, and we get 520 micrometers. And you can note here that the diffusivity divided by the film thickness has the unit meter per second, just as the mass transfer coefficient has. Now you can have mass transfer coefficient in other units. So these are a few examples. Here is the one we have had now, where we express the difference here in concentration. Here we express it in pressure. And here as water content, and this is for air water system, kilogram of water per kilogram of dry air. And since these coefficients here only have different units, you can convert them to each other like this. So in this lecture, we have talked both about convective and diffusive transport. We talked about two special cases, equimolar counter diffusion and diffusion through stagnant component, where the latter is also known as Stefan diffusion. And we have talked about the two film theory and mass transfer coefficients. In the next lecture or next screencast, we will start to talk about the two film theory and its connection to overall mass transfer coefficient. And then we'll turn our attention to penetration theory, boundary layer theory, and Raynan's analogy, which is a special case of Chilton-Colburn's analogy.